What's going on, everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to be talking about how to set WireGuard on Proxmox in under 10 minutes. So we are going to be using the Proxmox helper scripts again, and we're going to be making our own WireGuard server that's going to be running an LXC container off of our Proxmox server. So let's get right into it. The first thing to do is to come over to your Proxmox server. So mine is Bar Mind Tech, and we're going to come over here and click updates. And you can see I have a lot of packages that need to be updated. So I'm just going to refresh it and make sure everything's good. And then we're going to click we're gonna close that out and then we're gonna click upgrade. So I'm gonna open up the shell, we're gonna click yes, and I'm gonna let this upgrade. So it's important to make sure this is all up to date. One, because we are gonna be running WireGuard, we wanna make sure we have the latest packages to make sure that everything's secure network wise. And two, we wanna make sure we have everything updated for the Proxmox helper scripts because they do have dependencies that you know might be in these update packages. So I'm gonna let this finish updating and then we'll pick this back up in a minute. All right, so a couple minutes later, we can see over here in the shell that, let's see, can I, maybe it won't expand, but you can say it's all done and we're all up to date. So I'm just going to close this out and then we're just going to refresh again. And it's just going to try pulling new packages and compare it to what it has. And we can see now we're all up to date. So now this is all good. So we can come over to the Proxmox helper scripts. And again, you could just Google Proxmox helper scripts and it'll pull you right to the site. There's a ton of different stuff in here, but we're going to come over to server networking. And here you can see we have a ton of different options, mostly all LC containers. I think pretty much all of them are, except, oh, here you go. There's a router one that's uh, a VM. But they're pretty much all LC containers, and the one we're looking for is the WireGuard. Now, they do have TailScale if you're interested in TailScale. And I believe that's all really the VPN that are in there. They have HeadScale. So they have a couple in there, but today we're going to be working with WireGuard LXC. Personally, I think WireGuard is one of the best VPN protocols. And with this setup, it's super simple. So over here, it's just going to give you a quick description of WireGuard. So if you're not familiar, it's a free and open source VPN that uses, you know, secure protocols. You can make it yourself and self-host it to set up your own VPN. So if you're outside of your house or your local network, you can use your VPN to get back and access into your local network from a remote location. Um, so it is secure. I've been using WireGuard for years now, and I, I do enjoy it. It's one of the better protocols. And I definitely like using WireGuard over OpenVPN. The setup is super simple, so there's a few commands over here you can see. First, we gotta do is just copy over here, and this is gonna copy this bash script. So this is gonna be the one that actually installs the LXC container for WireGuard. So we're gonna come back over to Proxmox, and what we're gonna do is open up a shell, and instead of using the shell over here in the menus, I'm gonna open up my own, so in case I redirect my screen or whatever, we don't lose the shell and cancel out the install. So I'm gonna right click on my the main Proxmox node, and open up shell. I'm gonna expand it just a little bit, and now we are in the shell for the actual Proxmox node. One thing to keep in mind is we are root. Any changes you make are final. There's no, you know, have to add sudo or have to rerun the command. If you mistype your command and you, you know, you tell it's rm-f, it's going to rm-f everything. So just keep that in mind when you run your commands in the actual shell for Proxmox. But we're just going to be using this command that we got from the Proxmox helper scripts. So again, it's just going to be this first command up here. You could either copy it or you could use the copy button. So I'm just going to open this back up. We're going to paste in the command. And you can just see, that's the same command that we just pulled. I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to open up the wizard so we can make out the LXC container. So it's going to ask if we want to make the LXC container. It's going to be yes. And that's going to ask if you want the default settings. So if you do come back over here, you can see the default settings are 512 megabytes of RAM, 2 gigabytes of storage, and 1 virtual CPU. Personally, I'm okay with that. I've ran WireGuard off of a Raspberry Pi Zero with pretty much the same configuration. So I know it can work. If you're going to be running anything more in this container, which I don't think you really will, you might want to beef it up. But if you're okay with that, it's good to go. So we'll just come back over to our, our wizard. And we're going to click yes. And now it's just going to go through and run some of the commands itself to build out the WireGuard container. All in all, this takes a few minutes. So we'll be right back when it's all done. So what's really nice that we can see going on in the background is the helper script is doing all the configuration and it's listening out as it goes step by step. So it starts off by building out the container. And if we look out here in the task log, you could actually see create container, start container, it has the shell. So it's writing through all the commands into the shell by just working through. So we can read through and has everything all set and you could see that it's actually all done and we're good to go. So we're gonna close this out. And now you can see I have a second WireGuard container. So this was my test one from last night, but this is the one we're going to be using. And we're just going to open up a console and we're already logged in. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just change the password. So it's just passwd. 
and then in here you could just change your password to whatever you might want it to be and now password is all set so if you do log out at least you have the password to get back in if we come over to helper scripts again it's going to have the host configuration command so if you notice it is using pi vpn which we have talked about in the past we're now making it so it runs on an lxc container it's still a really good tool and there's no issue with running an lxc versus like a raspberry pi or something else but if we look it's coming over here it's going into the wireguard directory and then doing the setup vars so we're going to come over here and set any of the commands that we need to for our wireguard setup so now we're in the WireGuard container we're working with, and we're just going to paste in that command, and we're going to hit enter. So this is going to be the actual WireGuard configuration, so if you need to make any changes, you can do it in here. So if you want to change your port, you can change your port over here. If you want to change it so the host, instead of using your public IP, maybe you don't have a static IP, you want to use a DDNS, you could set that in here. If you want to change the allowed IPs, you could set that right over here and it could do it however you want. I'm going to leave everything default because I'm okay with that for now. We're going to just hit control X. And then the last thing we're going to do is come back over here. And the last command to make clients is going to be pi VPN add. So you could cop that or just type it in. So it'd be pi VPN add. It's going to ask you for the client. So I'll just do Carmine. And then it's all set, it makes the client out. So you can see it says the keys are generated, the config is generated, it updated the server config, and it reloaded WireGuard. It's all set. And it tells us where it put the config folder. So we'll just cd into slash root slash configs. We'll ls it. And you can see right over here, here's carmine.conf. So the only thing you might need to do is either if you want to copy it out, if you want to just cat it and then copy it out into a text file, or if you want to win SCP it off into the machine that you want to get the VPN for. So that's all set with this portion of the VPN. The only thing left is you're going to have to open up ports in your firewall. So the only thing after setting up all the VPN in the WireGuard container is opening up the port. And that's going to be on your router, your firewall, whatever device you use. But you're going to have to open up a port to 51820. So that is the WireGuard port unless you set something different. If you set a different port then you're going to have to set that as the port that's going to be used for your WireGuard. Now, I'm not going to go over how to set it up on the router or the firewall because everybody has something different. I'm going to assume if you've already been doing some home lab work, you probably already have it. So if you're not familiar with how to open up the port in your firewall or your router, just get that brand that your device is. And then you could just go online and look up how to open up a port on that device brand. And it'll be a quick video where the instructions will show you how to do it. Super simple, usually can be done in a few clicks, but then that'll be the last step in setting up the VPN. One last thing to keep in mind is if you do set up the VPN and you want to test it, you can't test it from the local network that the VPN is going to be running on. So if you have your household and you set the VPN so you can get back to your house, you can't connect to the VPN from your house. You either need to put like a hotspot up on your phone or you need to leave and use somebody else's Wi-Fi to access it because it won't connect that way. It just It's not how it works. But usually it'll work no problem once you open up the port and then you'll be all set to go. If you guys have any issues, you can comment below or join the Discord and we'll chat about it. But that's really how we do it, and that's how we set up the WireGuard LXC container in Proxmox in under 10 minutes. Super simple, and the Proxmox helper scripts really make the process so simple. And I mean, we did it in under 10 minutes. I know setting up WireGuard's quick usually, but it's just another option instead of using Docker. And I kind of like it better because if, you know if you blow out the Docker container to recreate it, sometimes we lose the config. I've had this happen a handful of times with some of my containers where I lost my whole configuration when I go to pull a new image. Just one more thing to add, it also mentions in the Proxmox helper scripts to update the container. You could just type update in the LXC console. So we'll just test that out really quick. So we'll do update. And you can see over here it's going to pull up the menu now to support update functions for the wire guard. So we can just hit yes. We're going to just do upgrade. It, has, it looks like WG dashboard, so I'm going to guess that we can do like the WG easy like we have in the Docker container. I guess it'll give like a management dashboard, so that's kind of cool. Might be something to check out. We'll hit OK. Now it's going to go through to upgrade that WireGuard container and make sure everything's good. You can see it's all set. So, I mean, it's a fresh container, so we know it's all up to date. Just did a quick Google search for the WG dashboard, and it brings me over to this GitHub page. And you can see it just gives you a nice GUI for managing your, your VPN through here. So if you do plan on using this LXC container as your VPN server, it might be an option to install because if you have multiple people connecting through or different tunnels, 
you can come over here and you can see everything nicely so it is over here if you're interested and that's how you'd be to install it you just got to run the command again and then hit to install it but that's how we get the uh proxbox container updated for wireguard or if you want to add the dashboard to it but that's it that's how we set up the proxmox lxc container to run wireguard and how we set up our clients and everything else like i said if you guys have any issues or questions you can comment below or join the discord server it's a really good option you can come in chat we have a community so other people will help you out too uh, i'll have a link below to the discord server i'll also have a link below to all my gear i use in my home lab for amazon if you're interested in getting any of the same gear as me and i also have an instagram now for the youtube channel so if you want to go on instagram and check out it's barmine underscore tech just like the youtube channel and over here i'm going to be posting some pretty much reels and everything else similar to what you're going to be seeing in the content on the channel it's going to be another medium that you can go on and watch some of the content mostly it's going to be all reels and maybe some pictures of projects i'm working on but it's just another place to check out some of the stuff as always i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next video